What's up, everybody? It's the Alex Leak and Friends NFL Podcast back for another week. I'm your host, Alex Leak, and we have a special guest with us on the podcast this week. Uh, former Arizona Wildcat, Chicago Bear, and Seattle Seahawks, seven-year pro defensive end, Joe Tafoya. Thanks so much for coming on the show, Joe. Thanks. Right on, man. Um, yes, um, I'm the Pittsburgh High School Hall of Famer. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I was going to bring that up. You attended Pittsburgh High School in Pittsburgh, California. What were those days like? Pittsburgh High. <laughs> I wasn't even the best. Um, athlete on my team, we had like nine guys get Division One scholarships. So I came from a, a high school powerhouse football team, Division Five A. We played against a team called De La Salle every year for the NF or for the uh, state title. Oh and yeah, we won on like a two hundred and something game winning streak. They made a movie about it and everything. <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> Nice. Um, were you always in uh, playing football? Was it always your passion, or did you play multiple sports in high school? You know, um, football never actually was my passion. I was more into baseball. Okay. I was a baseman and a pitcher, and I started getting letters and everything out of high school. I got letters from Fresno State, Cal State, UCLA, and then I hurt my shoulder, and then you know, the baseball season is really long, mm-hmm. and you can't really get girls when you're playing baseball. Yeah. All the girls were going to football players, <laughs> so I switched up sports. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Decision, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, you played both linebacker and defensive end. Um, did you have a preference on what position you played football? I mean, in high school, I was a linebacker. Made me the captain of the defense, and you know I, when I got to college, it wasn't quite fast enough. Okay. And to play linebacker, so they moved me to defensive end. Within like the first week or two, <laughs> <laughs> um, Larry McDuff was the defensive coordinator in, in Arizona. They had a famous defense from the '90s. It was called the Desert Swarm defense. Oh. And I felt pretty honored for them to want to pick me up and give me a scholarship. And yeah. then when I got to the school, there was a lot of competition, so competition breeds success. Absolutely. Um, speaking of that, going to Arizona, what was your recruitment experience like coming out of high school, and what led to you choosing Arizona? Yeah, that's just nuts. That's <laughs> just like a nuts old process. <laughs> <laughs> You're just the kid, you know, you don't even have any idea what's going on, and your parents have no idea. And one day I had... Um, like eight cars parked in front of my house oh, and wow. in order it was like UCLA, Texas, uh, oh God, Michigan State, Arizona, and Colorado. They're all, you know, all the coaches are sitting outside my house waiting to come in to have an opportunity to talk to me. So that's a very strange process. And if you have no frame of reference for it, like my family didn't, I was actually the first person to go to college for my family. Wow. We, we just didn't know what we were doing, you know. You, you're swimming with sharks at that point. Everybody's telling you how great it's going to be to come to the school. Some schools, I won't mention which ones, but there were smaller schools start offering me weird stuff like, oh, you know, I see your mom's car, and, you know, if she could use some work on her car, what if she just had a new one? <laughs> Yeah, that's that's got to be difficult as a high schooler, like having all those recruits, all those coaches. That's got to be tough to uh, not have some of that go to your head as a high school kid going into college. It's crazy. No, I, I had a very good upbringing. Both my parents did a great job of raising me. And, so, nice. and, the, and I have a really big Hispanic family. So when your head gets big, they bring you right back to reality. <laughs> like, quick, like, who do you think you are? You think you're all that? <laughs> 
<laughs> but um, it was different back back in the nineties when I was being recruited. Uh, Nineteen ninety six is when I graduated high school. Um, but now, now they're offering kids full ride scholarships when they're like what sophomores in high school. I, I saw that. Who was it? The coach from Michigan. Yeah, um, Harbaugh. He offered. What who was it? Jim Harbaugh, right? The Michigan coach. Harbaugh. That's right. Harbaugh offered a scholarship to a sophomore, and, and that's going to change things. That'll change everything. You know when. When one team does it, it's the copycat type thing. All the other teams are going to do it. And it's it's a big business nowadays. You know, they put a lot of money into recruiting. They put a lot of money into, you know, going out and finding those athletes. There's a lot of money involved with uh, NC2A sports. It's big business now. So all from top to bottom, um, People are getting smarter and getting more prepared. You have people that can kind of help you through the process now. But yeah, Wild West back in those days. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, while at Arizona, you were part of one of the most successful Wildcat teams ever in 1998, going 12-1 and and finishing number four after defeating the defending national champs Nebraska in the Holiday Bowl. Um yep. What was that like? And I bet you wish that the college football playoff existed back then. Could have had opportunity. We had a really good team. It yeah. was like an incredible set of circumstances. Um, we lost one game to UCLA, and they ended up playing in the Rose Bowl instead of us. We played in the Holiday Bowl against Nebraska. Strange enough, as a 12-1 and Pac-10, Pac-12 team. Um, that that was maybe one of the best teams I've ever been on wow. in professional sports and everything. Uh, we had Chris McAllister. He was our, our defensive back, first-round draft pick. Yes, North Bend, wide receiver, first-round draft pick. Strong candidate, first-round draft pick. Brandon Matamala, Antonio Pierce. Jeez. I mean, we had some really top talent on that team. And, um, you know, it's like you... you I forget the term that you use, but we got lightning in a bottle, basically. And it was a one-time thing. A very good school. I mean, a very good uh, team. Some good coaching. But as it goes, you know, you have a lot of success. and Everybody wants a piece of it. Coaches break up. Teams break up. They go in different directions. Um, we lost some of our staff. Some of the success went to our heads. As the next year, we were ranked number four. We went to uh, Penn State and played against Joe Paterno's Nene Lions, and we just got smoked. Always a tough team. <laughs> a tough team. <laughs> a tough environment to play, too. Yeah. Lamar Arrington was just a beast. Dang. Um, that's crazy. That had to be a great time there at Arizona. Um, yeah. What was I your... Go ahead. I said highly recommend. Nice. Anybody that's thinking about going to college definitely need that experience in your life. All right. Um, and then coming out of Arizona, what was your draft experience like coming up through the combine uh, and then going into the draft? Uh, you were eventually you were picked in the seventh round, picked 234 by Tony Dungy and the Tampa Bay Bucks in 2001. What was that experience like? That's when it starts to turn into a business. Yeah. In college, you know, you're still part of a team environment. And you can have the college spirit, you know. But, uh, yeah, it turned into a business right away. I went to the, I went, I was invited to go play in the Senior Bowl. Okay. Played in the Senior Bowl. So the coaches get a chance to, you know, poke and prod and see who you are, meet you and talk to you behind closed doors. And they open up your files and look through your history and your injury and, you know, put you in different, scheme positions to see what you look like and uh turns out i had a pretty bad shoulder injury when when i was getting ready to get drafted that required surgery and it just took my stock i it, it's so hard you know you work your entire life basically to get to a certain point and then you're up against i mean there's what a thousand schools out there and 80 guys sometimes 100 guys on each team yeah so there's a, a very small pool of guys that get invited to do these type of things. I was lucky enough to be one of those guys. But you're up against, you know, this is the best talent in the world. The world for football. Young guys in, that are in their prime. So uh, I played in the Senior Bowl, had a great game. I blocked a punt. We 
scored a touchdown. Uh, I had a couple of tackles. I tackled with Danny Tomlinson behind the last punch. Nice. Really tough kid. Yeah. So I made some, I, I impressed some people, but everybody was concerned about my shoulder injury. Yeah. So then I got invited to the combine. Alex, that's, a, that's, it's just crazy. I look back at my life and I'm like, this is a strange life. <laughs> you walk in, the, the first thing you do when you walk in is, you have to walk into this auditorium and then they give you a shirt with a number on it. You lose your name. You're now DL35, <laughs> D lineman number 35. And they're like, all right, uh, all the D linemen stand on that side of the room, take your shirts off, take your pants off, strip down into your underwear. We're going to walk you up on the stage. So we <laughs> walk into this auditorium full of like three, 400 people, scouts, coaches, training staff, whatever, reporters, and you, I was embarrassed, my face turned all red, <laughs> you're, uh, you, you walk up there, it's kind of like, I don't know if you've ever seen, like a cattle call, cattle, yeah. when they sell cattle, you stand up there, and they call out your numbers, six foot four, 271 pounds, they kick this body cat, fat caliber, and they your <laughs> body fat right there, Number, measure your arm length and your hand size and then you go walking off the stage and you have to walk off almost naked in front of 300 people <laughs> and then immediately you get into a bench and you do a bench press it's just, it's, it's just not set up for success you know and some guys do really well really well testing and I did well in some categories but you know it's I was a football player you know it's hard to measure hard, hard to measure some of those intangibles. Absolutely. Like passion. And yeah. Like how hard you're going to play when you're tired. If you're going to play when you're injured. Or what type of person you're going to be in the locker room. So that's really what made me. And that's the, the person that I ended up becoming. You know, just a guy that had to work from the bottom of the, the roster and make the team every single year. And I got past some injuries. And then I had one final one. Well, before we go there, I'm sure you want to ask about the Super Bowl experience. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, we're going to get to that. Yeah, to me, it seems like, with your case, it was definitely the shoulder that made you drop in the draft. And in, in my opinion, it wouldn't have mattered if you got drafted. Regardless, you were going to find a way into the NFL. You got that. You have the intangibles like yeah. you were talking about, the heart, the effort. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, that wasn't even the best high school football player on my team but you know when you you mix the ability to show up on time do your work um be responsible be a leader you know not get in trouble in the community mm -hmm. those type of things yeah you can't measure them but when you start looking at somebody's resume those are things that you can't ignore them after a while you have so many guys that are supremely talented that start falling behind and start falling through the cracks. And if you can't, if you can't do it in high school and you can't do it in college, how are you going to do it as a real human being in real life? Yeah. You know? And and the NFL is real life. I guess it's business. You have to be your own boss, and show up on time, be responsible, and not get in trouble in the community. So I think you know some teams are happy to ignore that to try and bring in top tier talent guys that they would never have a shot at otherwise but you know time after time it's proven that those are the guys that end up falling short and end up hurting a team more than helping them you give a guy a bunch of money and then all the goes out and gets drunk and gets into a car accident or beats up his girlfriend or looks bad and it doesn't work so I was never that guy but yeah. I got drafted in the seventh round. I ended up having surgery on my shoulder, had a back issue, but you know, it's just I, I made it. <laughs> I made it. I made it to the NFL. It was, it was my dream to play in the NFL when I started playing football. Yeah, that's and awesome. And just, and like you were saying, it's a business. You got to taste that business right away, and you're. You know, you go to the Bucks. You're gonna play with Tony for Tony Dungy, and then uh, your first pro preseason game, you suffer an ankle fracture, and just like that, the team bails on you and releases you. 
that must have been a difficult time and a, a real uh, wake-up call to the business aspect of the game. Yeah. yeah. You work your whole life to get to a certain point. You're finally there. You have an injury. And all of a sudden, you got to make a business decision. What, yeah. what do I do here? Because I had, I had broken my ankle. And I won't say any names because they're, they're still active coaches. Uh-huh. crazy that puts a whole new light on it that's crazy um well the good news for you is that uh my favorite team the chicago bears come through and pick you up and you would spend three seasons with them and uh have a pretty good you know you would establish yourself with the bears um what was it like breaking into a pretty nasty defense there in chicago Big guys, those are awesome days. Yeah. What was what was your first taste of the playoffs like there in Chicago against the Eagles? I played against a guy named John Runyon. Okay, yeah, he's a great. Yeah. Potential Hall of Fame career. I don't know if he's going to be there. 
if he's in the Hall of Fame or not. But definitely should be. Um, when you think of like big, ugly, nasty dudes, <laughs> this guy fits every one of those. And he he had these gloves that he never washed, you know. So he <laughs> put his hands on you, and you walk away smelling like vinegar, <laughs> cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Ronnie. You know, break his hand with your face mask. <laughs> yeah. That was my first experience with the playoffs. Um, the atmosphere was incredible. We were at Soldier Field, SC Championship game. We lost. Yeah. We lost to Don McNabb. But, boy, that city was on fire. And you know, it was such a fun town to be in, such a fun time to be on the Chicago Bears during that time. Yeah, absolutely. And then uh, in uh, 2005, you would join the Seattle Seahawks, who were Super Bowl contenders at the time. Um, and you would fit right in. You would have your most success there with the Seahawks um, while playing in 28 games for the franchise in two years. Um, you would play in five playoff games, including Super Bowl 40 in Detroit's Ford Field against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um First off, what was it like there in Seattle, uh, coming in there? What was it like establishing yourself with Seattle? It was different. Uh, I had just come from a very storied franchise with Chicago, with the Howell family and you know, a lot of tradition in a big, big city. And then I come into Seattle, and we're practicing in some of these backyards. <laughs> <laughs> there was like this pop-up bubble dome that we were using. And it smelled so bad in there <laughs> because it rained all the time. It just was like mold on the turf. We only had half of the field to practice on. Wow. But the guys were so cool and so welcoming. We played with Grant Lindstrom yeah. and Matt Hasselback, Sean Alexander, Walter Jones, Steve Hutchinson. And a lot of guys on, on the defense that no one's ever heard of, you know, just a, a group of guys that we'd all just really got along. There wasn't really much happening out here except for, or way up here except for football. And um, during practice one day, the offense and defense got into a huge fight during training camp. And we're fighting like, like we wanted to kill each other. Yeah. And when practice was over, everybody's in the locker room on the wall having fun, making jokes with each other, you know, nobody took it off the field. And I thought to myself, well, you know, that's what brotherhood is about right there. Absolutely. You can fight with them, you fight with your brother, but you best believe that no one else is going to fight them because you got their backs. So we went on to win a lot of games that season, and we played Carolina in the NFC Championship game, and just just an incredible environment up here was created with the 12th man, the loudest fans in the whole in the history of football. Yeah. And it was just mind blowing how supportive this little community had turned and how football oriented everybody had become. So we, we got to go to Fort Field to play against the home team over there, Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody knows that we got cheated out of that game. Yeah, absolutely. The NFL knows that the fans all know it. Yep. So that's disappointing. I should have a Super Bowl ring on my finger. But yeah. I never thought that uh, Vegas could reach the NFL, but after I was involved in that game, it was obvious that it was completely fixed. Yeah. Yeah, I remember watching it and just being like, let them play. Come on. I, I hate it when the refs become the story of the game. I want it decided on the field. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah we just saw some of that with last week with the Saints. Yeah, absolutely. It's difficult, but um, <laughs> you. Uh, so, what was it like uh, just being out there on that Super Bowl? Not too many people had the chance to play. Was the uh, atmosphere electric? Like, was it just crazy? The build up to it and all that. You know, I Getting there was, that was half of it, you know, like getting to a basketball game was half of it. Mm -hmm. There were so many events and you could take him to this place and that place and then they have media day and media day is insane. At one point I had a 
a short polo model hand puppet speaking to me in Spanish. <laughs> or Godfrey Jr. interviewing me and a German television station all at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's as wild as you could expect. There's so much attention focused on this moment that's getting ready to happen. And then opening kickoff happened, and I was lost in the moment, man. I was I was on the field through opening kickoff, and I look up, and I'm trying to catch the ball. I was, I was on the uh, back line. I was, I was blocking for the uh, receiver back there. Okay. I have a wedge back there. And I look up, and all of a sudden, there's flashes. There's so much flashes from cameras. My guy went right by me and makes the tackle. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and uh, another game in 2006, you would play in the playoffs versus your old team, the Chicago Bears in Soldier Field, which was a hell of a game. Yeah. I, I remember watching that one. Um, what did you think of that game, going back against your old team? Oh, man, I felt like I had something to prove. Yeah. Um, a lot of my old friends on the team and some new guys I've never met, but we, that was a lot of fun. It's fun. It's always fun to you know, try and prove yourself to your old team and go back and play. But, Absolutely. Um, we lost that game, and they ended up, I think they went to, did they go to the Super Bowl? Yeah, uh, yeah, that year we went to the Super Bowl, I believe, yeah. and played the Colts. That's right. But, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, incredible time. Um, and then, now, I actually read this. You're actually responsible for... Everyone talks about the 12s and how loud it is out there in Seattle. You're actually responsible for getting hold of the Guinness Book of World Records people and registering yeah. the Seahawks and getting that loudest stadium of the world uh, record. Tell us about that. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I've become an entrepreneur. I always have been an entrepreneur, you know. Yeah. But after football was over for me, just that moment stuck with me in the NFC Championship game. quite the brand nowadays too
Bartel Drugs. I got like 400 stores that carry our Lady 12 products. Wow. Today. That's I'm incredible. Right now. That's I'm great. actually doing inventory right before you go. Wow. That's great. What an idea to capitalize on that. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah I'm I, able to turn it into money. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, and the Seattle fans deserve that stuff, man. Uh, they're one of the most passionate fan bases in all of sports. You know, to whether it was the Sonics and they need to get that back, whether it was whether it's the Sounders, whether it's the Seahawks. I've heard people say that, oh, it's the stadium that helps make that noise. I, I don't know. Everyone talked about Key Arena back in the Sonics days. Those fans are passionate as hell, and they bring it every time they go out there. Yeah, I, it's a wonderful city to be in too, and. Everywhere you go, there's green and navy, and there's flags up everywhere. People are very, very proud. And they are everywhere, but, you know, it just this is such a small community up here. You recognize it more. Yeah. And there are no other teams. This is it. Yep. You know, football. Right now, we don't have a basketball team. We're getting a hockey team. Yeah. The hockey's coming. That's good, yeah, at least. Soccer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um... So then, uh, after Seattle, in 2007, you were signed by the Arizona Cardinals, and uh, you'd play 13 games for them, seven starts. Um, was What was Arizona like? Uh, was it a big difference between Seattle or Chicago, or is it just another stop? It really was. Yeah? I didn't feel like the family atmosphere. I didn't feel the friendships on the team. I didn't feel that management, you know, was... I didn't feel like the team and management were really on the same page. Yeah. King Wood and Hunt came over from Pittsburgh. He brought a lot of his own people there. They were doing weird stuff with the team. Um, I kind of saw myself on my way out, you know. And then I got injured. Yeah. And it was, that was it for me. I came out of surgery and the doctor's like, yeah, Joe, you're not going to be the same anymore. So time to find something else to do. And just like that, after 22 years of playing football, we are done. You have nothing. Except this set of skills that, you know, if you want to be a coach or a commentator or something, you know, yeah. can't really apply them anymore. But Arizona was, it's a unique situation. It's not, it's not strange to me that they're not winning. They can't find a way to win. They, they have a lot of changes that they need to make in their culture. Yeah. Fan culture, team culture, management, ownership. Yep. So it's a tough place to win. People just don't buy it, you know. Phoenix and those areas, you get a lot of transient people, people that come in from different places, but it's not really their home, you know, they're just living there. Yeah. And so they're all passionate about some other team. You look up in the stands, you know, you're <laughs> not really feeling the board, especially after coming from Seattle. <laughs> yeah, we'll see if uh, Josh Rosen can change things out there in Arizona or if Cl Cliff Kingsbury can get the fans on their side. Get some. Uh, everyone supports a winner. Yeah. That's true. Um, let's see here. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the injury, it's a tough way to go out in your career to suffer a career-ending foot injury like that. But, you know, seven uh, good years in the NFL in a very physical era of football. Um, how do you look back on your NFL career? You you accomplished a hell of a lot. I'm proud of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And my little boy's a tank, mm -hmm. but you know, he likes golf, so we would talk a lot about golf and Star Wars. Nice. And I walk around the city, and sometimes people recognize me and say, what's up? Most of the time, not. But um, it was a really fun part of my life, and I'm proud of every moment of it. And I just I look back with a lot of pride. And my family, we, we, we had a wonderful journey going on that all of that together. They were able to share that with me. Um, made my hometown proud, made a lot of people proud by making it that far. They could say, yeah, we were there with him when he was in high school. We knew he was going to be something. And uh, it's over. And <laughs> <laughs> look back, and I'm like, wow, I did it. You know, I got an NFC championship ring. I got a bunch of trophy, a jersey hanging up all over the place. Yeah. And, uh, That's my awesome. Friends come over and I'm like, dang, Joey, you know, you should do more with this. I'm like, what more can I be doing? <laughs> <laughs> I did a lot with this. You know, I've got a whole business based on this. But, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. 
you're doing a ton. I mean, like, uh, I know, I mean, what, what are you up to now post days of football career? I know you talked about the Lady 12 clothing company, you the Legion of Boom trademarking. You, I know you also, you also do like a golf experience shop at Safeco Field. Is that right? For the Mariners? Yeah, yeah. Some investments, you know, I've made some investments over my time. And, you know, do your best to step in and help where you can with those, see them be successful. Yeah. So we got a golf studio there. Probably won't do that again this year. I want to transition that into something else. Okay. Got a lot of irons in the fire, but, you know, Mama is home doing this one, so I want to be here with her and the family. Yeah. With the Lady Trump gear, so that's where I spend all my time. That's I, good. I get called to do consulting from time to time. And, you know, I've got a great entrepreneurial spirit and a lot of business savvy and experience. So I help my friends sometimes launch their little companies. I'm always supportive of entrepreneurs. Nice. Do a lot of nonprofit stuff, but yeah, it's, we're we're doing well here, man. I'm happy. Yeah, it's great to see you giving back. Yeah. Um. All right, let's do uh, the Super Bowl. You still you keep up with the game? You watch the playoffs? I did. Yeah. Nice. I'm still I'm still recovering. I went to uh, Bears Eagles wild card round. I'm still recovering from that one. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, but hell of a playoffs. Um, the Super Bowl is coming up. Rams Patriots uh, should be a hell of a game. Do you have a prediction for the big game? Yeah, I do. Uh, Tom Brady is unbeatable. Yeah. At this point, in this time, they've been there so many times and have done it so many times. The franchise, the management, they know how to handle these situations. The Rams just moved through the city. They're looking at a lot of spotlights and young quarterback. A lot of really high caliber talent in that team. And they together collectively, only a couple of guys have ever been to the big show. Mm -hmm. And it is a big show, and you have to respect what it is and understand what you're playing in when you get there. But um, is there a Vegas line? What, what's the betting line? Um, I'm not sure. I haven't seen that yet. But yeah, whatever I'm that is, that's what I'm going with. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, I've had a too much of a in their heart. Absolutely. Know? Even they've got Edelman is like he's just a guy, but all of a sudden he shows up. Gronk is injured all year long. He shows up. Yeah. And then all of a sudden they got running back, you know, Sonny Michelle will push yeah. up. And their defense shows up. It's like right at the right time, they peak right at the right time. They just know they have a winning formula and it's boring and everybody hates the fact that the Patriots are there again. Absolutely. Yeah. But if, if Vegas has them down and not winning, then I would go with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm there, man. I understand that how it works. I'm going Patriots in the Super Bowl. I uh, I've had a rough playoffs as far as picking games, but my I take the Patriots in every game, and that's that saved me a little bit. So right. we'll, we'll, well see. Good luck to you, man. <laughs> you yeah. as well. Working on your podcast. Yeah, out there. absolutely. Thank, thanks so much for some of your time, Joe. Uh, great interview. My pleasure. All right. Uh, and uh, All right. I really appreciate it, and have a good one. All right. See ya. All right, guys, that'll do it for this week's episode. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like, subscribe, or leave a comment, and we'll be back next week. Peace out.